Bridgerton Season 2 was released at the end of March, and the ton was a buzz. The romance drama and historical fiction attracted much more scandal, romance, and drama than we could have anticipated. In honor of the show's third season, we've compiled a list of the eight most scandalous moments from Season 2 that we cannot stop thinking about. In no particular order, let's dive in. First up at number eight, let's have a look at the Bridgerton artist, Benedict Bridgerton. Bridgerton, played by Luke Thompson, is shown pursuing his artistic talents. He applies to a prestigious art school on a whim and gets accepted. Throughout the season, Benedict spends most of his time working on his craft or attending social gatherings with his artist peers. According to Antony, his elder brother, Benedict is merely partying all the time and not paying any attention to his work. We see how this stereotype around art students goes back to the 18th century. Throughout the episode, Benedict is shown to be the number two. As said by Antony himself, we see him contemplate his stature in his family while enjoying his lavish lifestyle simultaneously. At the end of the season, it is revealed that his enrollment in the institution was primarily secured because Antony made a sizable donation to the school and not because of his artistic merit. It is suspected that season three will keep Benedict center stage. The fans of the show are hopeful for some queer associated with the artist of the show too, but as of yet, there is no confirmation about it. Well, one can hope. Up next at number 7, the Sharma Bridgerton wedding fiasco. In episode 6, Miss Edwina Sharma is to be married to Antony Bridgerton in a lavish ceremony, sponsored by the Queen herself. As Queen Charlotte deemed Miss Edwina the diamond of the season, she planned the wedding to leave no stone unturned to impress the Don with her planning skills. And Antony appears to be very smitten by Miss Edwina, but is he really? It seems like it on the surface, or in public at least. Perhaps it is his looming sense of responsibility that wants him to settle down with the most eligible bachelorette in the town. The courtship is brought to an end after Edwina finds out about the blossoming relationship between her elder sister and her betrothed at the 11th hour. Drama! The episode revolves around the queen and the guest, waiting for what's to happen after Edwina leaves Antony at the altar. She realizes that her fiancé's feelings lie with her elder sister and walks out of the church. As she decides what to do, the guests are kept on the castle grounds and forbidden from leaving. Meanwhile, the queen is fretting over her reputation, and Lady Dunbury and Lady Bridgerton share a laugh at the absurdity of the situation. Next up, for some plotting and planning, Lady Portia is scheming to secure a fortune at number six. Lady Portia has quite the journey centered around financial uncertainty this season. After Lord Featherington passed away, the new lord is coming to claim the household and appear to have ruby mines in the United States. Throughout the season, we see her scheme and plot to hint at the new lord to take one of her daughters, Prudence, as his wife. The lady is relentless as she tries to change Prudence's simple-minded ways to make her more appealing to the new man. It is only after careful planning that she achieves to get the two caught by bystanders spending time alone. Lady Portia invents a story about their romantic wrongdoing and insists that they must wed. The plan works, but by the end of the season, it is found that Lord Featherington is in fact penniless, leaving her plotting to no success. Another steamy aspect is his hots for Lady Portia herself. The two plan to run away too, but she ditches him at the last minute, not to mention at Number 5. The Catastrophic Dinner with the Sheffields The Sharma family tree expands as we see Edwina's estranged grandparents come into town after hearing about her betrothal to a Bridgerton man. Lord and Lady Sheffield arrive at Lady Danbury's for a meal. For backstory, you must know that Lady Mary, Edwina and Kate's mother, married a lowly clerk out of her own will, which led to her being written out of the family fortune. The trust fund will only be given to Edwina if she marries a high-bred Englishman. At dinner, the Sheffields accuse Lady Mary of wanting to snatch her parents' money. After all this time, and the secret about Edwina's trust fund is revealed to her. This is the first Edwina's hearing of the trust fund, by the way, and the revelation is followed by her demanding an explanation from her sister come best friend, Kate. The chaotic dinner scene is also the first wedge between the Sharma girls, who have always appeared to be joined 
at the hip. Not to mention at number four, Lady Whistledown takes a crack at one of her own. The identity of Lady Whistledown was revealed at the end of season one. It is Penelope Featherington, the flower on the wall of every social gathering and a best friend to Eloise Bridgerton. Throughout the season, we see Queen Charlotte try her best to uncover the identity of the salacious gossip monger. Alas, her efforts bear no fruit, and she suspects that it is, in fact, the very publicly opinionated Eloise Bridgerton, against whom not even a single rumor has been spread. The queen first tries to take Eloise on board in her covert mission to unmask the writer, but then accuses her of being Lady Whistledown herself. Eloise then cries to Penelope, and her best friend takes matters into her own hands. To sway the queen's attention elsewhere and get the heat off her best friend, Lady Whistledown, writes a scathing piece on Eloise. She exposes her for befriending a lower-class man. The gossip spreads like fire and destroys the Bridgerton name. We get how Penelope only wanted to protect her friend, but could there have been an underlying evil intention too? We hope not, because this feminist BFF duo is one of our favorite fictional friendships. Let's learn more about Colin paying a visit to Lady Crane at number three. The biggest scandal in season one was perhaps Marina Thompson. The new girl in town tried to entrap Colin Bridgerton into a marriage to save herself from public scorn. It was only because of Lady Whistledown, or Penelope's selfish love for Colin, however you'd like to put it, that the information was made public. The betrothal never came to pass as the secret was exposed. But was Marina really to blame for trying to look after herself? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. By the end of the season, Miss Thompson marries the brother of her dead fiancé. The baby she has is claimed by her now husband, too. After all this time, Colin still seems hung up on Miss Thompson, his first love. In season two, he plans to visit Marina, now known as Lady Crane. His intrigue is met with disregard, and rightly so, as Colin tries to reignite the flame between them. As her husband invites Colin to stay for dinner, the former lover bond, but Marina explicitly states how she doesn't have any intention of messing up her life, and that he must move on. At his departure, she also tries to inform Colin to take his interest elsewhere, hinting at Penelope Featherington. Following up at number two, the Kate Sharma and Anthony Bridgerton entanglement. The focal point of season two is the sizzling chemistry between the dusky beauty Kate and the very authoritative Anthony. The forbidden love between the man and his soon-to-be sister-in-law takes many romantic and intense turns. After the called-off wedding scandal and being shunned from the town, both families are thrust into spending more time together to not give the people more material for gossip. To satiate the rumors around them and put on a warm front, Lady Danbury and Lady Bridgerton hatch up a plan to host a ball by the Sharmas and Bridgertons. Around the time of the ball, no one shows up and the families end up dancing together in merriment and allow themselves some moments of reprieve. Kate, on the other hand, seems distraught the entire evening as she faces her sister's wrath and goes out to have some air. As she rests under the gazebo, she's interrupted by Antony. After a few curt words exchanged, the disdain quickly turns to passion, and the two end up spending the night together outdoors. This is only one of the scenes from season two, which the audience noticed there to be significantly less of. Public in that society without marriage? Quite the scandal indeed. Lastly, at number one, Lady Whistledown's anonymity is compromised. After searching near and far and trying to learn about Lady Whistledown's identity, Eloise finally stumbles upon the truth in the season finale. This is after Lady Whistledown has exposed Eloise's friendship with Theo. And when Penelope lets her guard down slightly, she pieces the information together. The revelation and betrayal devastate Eloise to the core considering Lady Whistledown's reporting about the Bridgertons. The confrontation takes place in Penelope's room, which is ravaged, and Eloise tells her that she never wishes to see or speak to her again. While the build-up was there the entire time, it was terrible for us to watch our fave on-screen BFFs go at each other. On that note, it'll be a goodbye from us. Let us know in the comments what scandal did you find most exciting. We'll catch you in the next one.